Hey man, say man, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Quest the Plug, and I'm back in a banger. We got some more Larry Bird, bro. I told y'all I was gonna be, get back in a lot with these Larry Bird and uh, Jordan reactions. I've been letting the videos stack up, so let's see, bro. Uh, hopefully this video they got stories and stuff I never I never heard because I know I've damn near heard every Larry Bird story on YouTube at this point, bro. A nigga was pushing them, cranking them Bird videos out like crazy. But I mean, I love it, bro. I found out one about one of the best players in NBA history who I didn't even know was. Like, I knew about Bird, but I used to think he was like, bro, I don't know. I was like, why do people always got Bird top five, top ten? Shit, because I, now I know, bro, watching his highlights, bro, probably one of the best shooters. That, he one of the best shooters ever, one of the best passes ever, which gets overlooked. One of the best rebounds, bro, averaged ten boards on his career. Like, he can literally fit in any area, can play any type of style of basketball, bro. But, yeah, let's get into it. Before you can make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and go to 5K, bro, let's do it. Show me better, you can tell me. Smooth, Dwight. Great show, guys, and thanks for lunch. This guy right here is the legendary Larry Bird. Larry Bird, cool as hell with that app. This is literally the man who swept Michael Jordan twice in the NBA. Hey, he swept Jordan twice. You remember that, bro? Hey, Larry Bird. Sheesh, guys. Now Jordan that never beat Bird in the playoffs. Michael Jordan twice in the NBA playoffs. Sheesh, guys. Even though the Bulls was young, the Bulls was young. Jordan didn't have. He he didn't really have nobody. But still, it's still Michael Jordan at the end of the day. He did GOAT, so he couldn't beat Bird, so. Now that's something impressive to put on a resume. <laughs> anyway, I'll admit it. I wasn't watching the NBA in the mid-80s because, well, I wasn't born yet. But I was curious, very curious, as to how good Larry Bird actually was and what his contemporaries were saying about him when he was dominating the NBA world. Bird's rivalry with Magic Johnson will go down as one of the greatest rivalries in sports history. Oh, no, no, no. It is the greatest rivalry in sports history. Ain't no will go down. We will never see nothing like that again. That rivalry literally saved the NBA, bro. I mean, these Magic Johnson will go down as one of the greatest rivalries in sports history. I mean, these two iconic figures carried the league in the 80s and brought it to newer heights with their classic duels, which included three NBA finals. Damn. Among all the great players that Magic faced in his career, he said in an ESPN interview that the only player he dreaded going up against was Larry Bird. That when I guy. played, Larry Bird was the only one I feared. A lot of black guys always ask me, did Larry Bird really play that good? I said Larry Bird is so good that it's frightening. Damn. In fact, Magic even shared a crazy frightening story where that's an interesting word to use, bro. Nigga said frightening. He's he meant that. Where Bird destroyed him mentally just to emphasize a point. DJ hey, I forgot Bird is one of the greatest trash talks ever. You know how he said that Bird destroyed him mentally. Larry Bird is so good that it's frightening. In fact, Magic even shared a crazy story where Bird destroyed him mentally just to emphasize a point. DJ is coming down with the ball and he passed the ball to Larry in the corner. So as DJ passed it to Larry, my first job was to stop you first, right? Now I gotta go out and close Larry Bird up. So as I'm running out to Larry Bird, He's trash talking me. I don't know why you're running out here. Who says that in the middle of a game? That's crazy. He said, I'm gonna wait till you get one step away from me and I'm gonna shoot it right in your face. True story. It's the fact that when Bird say this shit, he actually goes out and do it, bro. He will, he gonna do it. What he says every time. So I got one step away and he shot it. All net, three pointer good. Then he turned to me and said, you did all that running for nothing. The rivalry between the Celtics and the Lakers highlighted the NBA in the 80s, and amidst their classic encounters, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is also another legend who saw and experienced how great of a player Larry Bird was. The best guy I played against might have been Larry Bird. Mm. People don't appreciate him saying that too. He played against some niggas, Will Chamberlain, Dr. J. Like he played against some niggas, bro. Larry Bird enough. They think he is a chubby white guy, but he would wear us down. The muscle that is in between his ears was the best because he made three points, assisted, rebounded, and had steals. Mm. He was always in the right place at the right time. He is, without a doubt, one of the best players I've ever played against. Anyway, Dominic Wilkins was also recognized as one of the hey, formidable- Bird, one reason why Dominic don't got a ring, bro. Yeah, he used to kill the Hawks. ...rivals of Bird in the 80s. Back in his rookie season, Wilkins told in detail during an interview what went down when he shared the court with Larry Bird for the very first time. One of the first times I ever played against him, I went out for the opening tip and I went to shake his hand. He just stood there and looked at me stone-faced with his hands behind his back. Disrespect. I was like, whoa. Then we are getting ready for the tip and he says to me, you don't belong in this league, Holmes. 
Holmes is crazy. I think I heard his story before, but Holmes get me every time. Like, come on, bro. I believe it. It's it happened funny, so like. fast. I didn't know what to think. Then they had the ball and I was on him and he said, I don't know why they got you guarding me, Holmes. You can't guard me. Then whop, he hit a three. Then he came down again and said, they made a mistake putting you on me, Holmes. And he took another three. Same as what happened to Dominic, the legendary high flyer Clyde Drexler Clyde, Clyde. also had an unpleasant experience. He used to kill the Blazers too. I think it was a series against the Blazers that was crazy. It's in his rookie year when Bird welcomed him into the league. I was guarding him my rookie year. He looks at me and he goes, you can't stop me. I looked at him and I said, Steve Clyde, just like an old, sophisticated nerd. In my rookie year. Nah, bro, look clean, he looks though. at me and he goes, you can't. Nigga been ball since the 80s. <laughs> God damn, bro, you been ball for your whole life, nigga. Welcomed him into the league. I was guarding him my rookie year. He looks at me and he goes, you can't stop me. I looked at him and I said, he cut off that George Jefferson cut he used to have back in the day, because that cut is crazy, bro. Just to, I don't know what was up with, bro. Nah, did, did Clyde, I swear Clyde had the George Jefferson cut. Let me see. Let me see. I swear he got that uh that cut. And then Clyde just had like a little George Jefferson cut back in the day, or he or he was was he purely bald? Oh yeah, he did have that little the ball. I was guarding him my rookie year. In front of his head, bald, and then the the back with hair, like bro, that's the nastiest cut you can get as a young nigga, bro. Looks at me and he goes, "You can't see, stop bro. me." I looked at him and I said. Gosh, boy, you're so confident. He goes, confident? You're a rookie. You don't know anything. He proceeded to score like 10 straight points on me. Coach took me out of the game, and he walks by, and he's laughing at me. Bro the legendary tales of Larry Bird's trash talk bro, games have been passed around the NBA circles like a hot potato. And, uh, My bad, y'all. That is crazy. Coach took me out of the game, and he walks by, and he's laughing at me. The legendary tales of Larry Bird's trash talk games have been passed around the NBA circles like a hot potato and uh, there were some accounts that were just so outrageous that we'd think he was playing God or something because Bird knew exactly what would happen and how. Damn. Kevin McHale had been a longtime teammate of Bird and he witnessed one of these crazy tales unfold. We were playing in Phoenix and we were way up. We were like 15 up and we had the worst fourth quarter in history. We were terrible and Larry's bad. Larry's missing shots, throwing it to the other team, throwing it in the third row, and they come back, and somehow they go up too. So we have an out-of-bounds play. I'm taking it out, and Larry says, I'm going to bust off the play, and I'm going to shoot a three. We're down two. I'm like, no, don't do that. Let's shoot a two, please. Go to the hole. Try to get You know, this the 80s, bro. Let's take a two. Shit, you know, now, shit, the whole team probably would have been trying to shoot a three. Fouled. Let's just get into overtime and see if we can't win this game. And Larry, you think Bird want to go to overtime? He's trying to end the game now. I don't know if I've got to bring it up and get into Bird. One, I think, in my opinion, he's the most clutch shooter in NBA history. Larry says, "Nah, I'm just gonna bust a three on them." Bust I'm a three. I'm like, "Oh my god!" So he tells the Phoenix bench, tells the coaches, "Yeah, I'm fixing to bust a three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this." And he gets the ball, jumps out, busts the play, gets the ball at the slot, shoots the ball. As the ball is in the air. He kind of turns towards the Phoenix bench and yells, told you so, and starts running to the locker room. It went in. I got to see footage, bro. In. No way. Anyway, here's another crazy story about Larry Bird's greatness. Gotta see footage. Coming directly from Mark Aguirre, which was later revealed by Skip Bayless. According to the Undisputed host, he confirmed that Bird can really get into his opponent's heads using his words. And the same fate happened to the Mavericks three-time All-Star, just like in the previous stories we just heard. Mark Aguirre used to tell me as a Maverick, you can't believe what Larry Bird does to me. He just terrorizes me. I don't know why I thought bro name was Mark Aguirre. <laughs> as a Maverick, you can't believe what Larry Bird does to me. He just terrorizes me. He trash talks me like nobody's ever trash talked me. He leans into my ear and whispers stuff I can't even repeat to you. And he backs it up. I'm going to do this. Pause. To you, and he does it. This Mark Aguirre, he's an all-star, the heart and the soul of those Dallas Mavericks. Players during that time had no answer to Larry Bird, even if you're as that good of a defender as... That's crazy. Players during that time had no answer to Larry Bird, even if you're as good of a defender as James Worthy was. In fact, he later revealed in an interview that guarding Bird gave him nightmares, and also said that Michael Jordan was easier to guard than him because Bird was just way too savvy. Hey, bro, he said Bird was harder to guard than Jordan. He had a hot, crazy statement, bro. But he actually played against him, so that shit. 
as his opinion. Their basketball IQ compared to the GOAT. I would much rather guard Michael Jordan than Larry Bird, because you have to play the game as a thinker when you're playing Bird. You have to get inside his mind. Larry wasn't quick. He couldn't jump really high, but there were just some sleepless nights. Anyway, guys, one of the most famous... Yeah, bro, kill you with IQ, bro. Making the right pass, cutting, backdooring, getting open off, doing look, you know, doing things to get open, getting his teammates open. Like, even Bird, like Curry, bro, all, even off the ball, you got to guard him. This highlight crazy. That's the worst type of player to guard when even off ball, you got to worry about him. But there were just some sleepless nights. Anyway, guys, one of the most famous highlights in Bird's career was when he and Julius Irving literally slugged it out this on the classic court. classic choke picture. Oh, yeah. Damn. 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 That behind. was crazy. Though Dr. J wasn't able to hold back his punches at the time, he actually had a deep and profound respect for Larry as a player and for the contributions he made to the game. In his autobiography, Irving detailed and broke down the things that made Bird great and even admitted that he himself can't stop Bird when he's on a roll. <laughs> what I noticed right away about Larry, even as a rookie, is that not only he can get a shot and he has an amazing range for a big man, but he will make it too. He may be the best shooter. Man, Bird is like 6'10", so I guess he was considered a big man back then. And he has an amazing range for a big man, but he will make it too. He may be the best shooter I've ever seen, and he is a smart passer, able to read the ball through inches of daylight, and he will not stop working. Bird and I have an interesting relationship on the court. When I defend him and when the Celtics draft Kevin McHale and move Larry to small forward, that becomes a regular matchup for me. Mm. If he puts the ball down on the floor, then I think I have him. I could poke the ball away and maybe get a steal. Larry's game doesn't have any weaknesses, but among his relative strengths, he's least skilled as a dribbler. Yeah. When he's guarding me, he can't stay with me, but I'll be honest, I can't really stop him either. <laughs> At that point in my career, he was a better rebounder than I am. But remember, he's 10 years younger. Mm. Anyway, just like the Celtic great, Wilt Chamberlain is another legend that changed the game and, uh, even though Will said something about Burr, he ain't played against him, but you know, he watched him for sure. He played in a different era. He had high regards for Bird because of his strong fundamentals and because he played basketball the right way. This man also is very, very talented. I think he epitomizes what a forward is supposed to do, mm. especially in the game he played because he was technically correct. He was a correct type of basketball player and most people today don't play the game correctly. And he did. Lastly, here's another take on Larry Sir Bird's Charles. greatness coming from the controversial player turned analysis, Charles Barkley. When Sir Charles opens his mouth, whether it's bad or a good take, people listen to what he has to say, and here's his take on Bird and how he's different from other great players. He didn't have the physical ability. Larry would beat you with his will and his mind, but he didn't have the athletic ability that Kobe, Michael, and LeBron and those guys have. Larry willed himself and his team to win. Crazy that a non-athlete can do stuff like that. It's kind of like Luca, even though Luke, it just basically think of Bird as Luca that's winning. That was winning, bro. Luke Bird's second year, he took his team from like a twenty and sixty-two record to sixty wins. Second year chip. That's how good Bird was when you think about it. But yeah, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, man. Y'all Bird constantly on the content, bro. In the comments, bro, definitely nice. I'm tired, man. I'm out when I wrote the 5K.